York is a fabulous place to live and to work. It is a vibrant city with two universities and a rich heritage. The city offers a wealth of historic attractions and a variety of cultural and sporting activities, making it a popular tourist destination and a place that people want to live. Overall, the people of York enjoy a good standard of living and enjoy good health. But it is not true to say that this is the same for every resident living in York. I know that some of the conditions that cause the most ill health in society today, like obesity, diabetes, heart disease and cancer, are more common in the least affluent areas of York. It is true that many of these conditions can be avoided or improved by making changes to our lifestyle. But the ability of individuals to be able to do this is affected by many factors, not least the place in which they live. I wanted my annual report this year to focus on hearing the views of people that live in York and how the place in which they live has had a positive or negative effect on their health and that of their family or friends. In York, approximately 30% of adults are drinking over the Chief Medical Officer's guidelines of drinking 14 units of alcohol per week. We know that approximately one in five adults are binge drinking on their heaviest drinking day. And we also know that within York, there's a really low abstinence rate. So that is people who don't drink. So York, there's about 8% of adults who don't drink, whereas nationally, it's around 16%. Alcohol's always been a big part of my life. And as years went on, it was one of those things that I'd come in from work, have a, a glass of wine, soon turned into a bottle of wine. And I suppose in the last 10 years, it was gradually increasing where alcohol was becoming a more prominent part of my life. It was the first thing I thought of when I woke up in the morning of, I'll get through the day's work and then I can reward myself with a glass of wine. So there are many harms associated with binge drinking. Some relate to an individual's health, their physical health. Often, drinking doesn't manifest itself and those conditions don't become evident straight away. But over a long period of time, these conditions can become evident. And there are things such as cancers, cancers of the, the throat, uh, breast cancer in females, heart disease, uh, liver failure are some of the really common uh, side effects associated with, with long-term drinking and long-term binge drinking. I think I was fortunate enough that we have Lifeline up at the, the top of uh, Micklegate there. So I referred myself to Lifeline, got some support from them, decided to do the Oak Trees programme with Changing Life, which is a 12-week um, addiction uh, treatment programme. So within York, we are working as the public health team, we're working closely with the CCG in a collaborative way to deliver some training into primary care. The identification part is where they would screen people's current alcohol use and dependent upon the results, they would have a conversation with them or if they identified that they might possibly de be dependent, they would then refer them on into community services. Childhood obesity is one of the biggest threats to the health of our children. We see children who develop type 2 diabetes, a condition that used to be rarely seen outside of adulthood. We also know that obese children are more likely to experience bullying and have low self-esteem. In York, one in five of our reception age children are above a healthy weight with 8% of them being classified as obese. By the time children are leaving primary school in year six, that has risen to one in three who are above a healthy weight, with 16% being classed as obese. So we know that the place in which we live plays an important role in us being able to make those healthy choices, whether that's because of the food that we have access to in our local neighbourhood or the opportunities to get outside and be physically active. One York dad has been working hard to make sure that his daughter can grow up in an environment where the healthy choices are the easier choices and become the norm. It's easier for a child to go to the shop and buy crisps and stuff than it is you know, healthy food. Jasmine's learning stuff about growing vegetables and fruit and stuff. So these are the onions. The, these two are the cauliflowers and these two are the cucumbers. My favourite is probably the peas because they've just grown so well and we, we kept on moving them all over the place, but we decided to put them there so when it's early in the morning, the sun can just shine on them. Now it's, Peas, carrots, everything. She, 
She, she's got the bug. She wants to try. So we've got my carrots here, which we've all grown them all from seeds except from the tomato plant. She's already got a plan of what. It's only going to be a stew, but it's going to have her own potatoes in, her own, you know, tomatoes in, her own peas in, and her own carrots in. We're going to grow some potatoes to come with our mash and pumpkin, so when it's Halloween we can start carving them out. We call those that one the daddy tree because my dad started to grow that one. Get some compost, throw it in a pot, see if it grows. Well, I started eating healthy and I just love, love gardening. There's a popular saying that if physical activity were a pill, it would be the wonder drug. Being physically active can reduce our chances of developing conditions like diabetes, heart disease and stroke by up to 50% and can reduce our chances of an early death by as much as 30%. But in York, almost a third of adults don't do the recommended amounts of exercise. We're particularly working to target the 20% of adults who do less than 30 minutes activity in a week. So we work very closely with our community and voluntary sports groups to try and look at what opportunities we can create and provide for people to engage with physical activity and find something that they would enjoy doing. Walking football is one example of an activity that has provided an opportunity for people to re-engage and enjoy physical activity again. Basically, I thought I'd never kick a football again. Then walking football came. It, it's a health benefit. It, it keeps your weight down, it keeps you active, it keeps your mind active, I believe, as well. Well, I'm certainly over 50 and I started because I wanted to play football but since then I was then diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and I had to lose weight which I'm still doing and that has controlled the diabetes with the exercise. I do this three times a week. I had a heart attack uh, um, 2001 then I had a bypass in 2002 so um, it took quite a bit of getting over but now I'm fully over it. When I had my uh, health issues, you, you get scared. You, you, you don't think you'll be able to do anything again. Your confidence goes, well, this is a great way to build up your confidence again. You can start slowly and work your way in so you believe you can do things, you can be healthy again, you can have a normal life. Well, it benefits them through getting exercise, but also through seeing other people. I mean, all of that's good for your health and your mental health. It's nice to meet people and have conversations. And if it's about football, what could be better? As soon as that ball hit the back of the net, I was captured forever. My name's Ian Cartwright and I've struggled with depression on and off for several years. For myself, it was that I struggled with reactive depression and anxiety in that I was overworking, so I had no capacity to cope with conflict. I think it's really important to ask for help because it's so easy when you're in a state of depression to shut yourself off. It takes a lot of effort to to turn to help. I, I really struggle being a man to reach out and say, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with depression. Uh, my wife made me go to the doctor initially one Saturday night and, um, and so I went and my doctor was just brilliant. I think the environment and green spaces and being out in the countryside are really helpful. I think sometimes when, when you've got depression it's really hard to get yourself out to do anything. So again, I think going for a walk with a friend or with your family, if you've got a dog, just to get out. Yeah, I'm really passionate about Time to Change because it's, um, it's a campaign to help break down the stigma and discrimination that there is with mental health. But my advice to anybody with mental health problems is simply talk about it. I think the more we can get people talking about it, the better. I want to thank everyone who has shared their views with us. The stories people have shared show us how important the people around us and the place in which we live are in supporting our health and happiness. As the Director of Public Health for York, I will use the personal experiences people have shared to guide the work that we do as a council, together with our partners, to improve the health and well-being of the people who live in this great city. I want to continue this conversation and help to give people a voice so they feel they have an important role in making York a great healthy place for everyone to live in.